Hello, uh, my name is Tushar Parida. I hold the position of General Manager, uh, Polymers Application and Marketing at Garda Chemicals Limited. Garda Chemicals Limited is a $250 million chemical company with four manufacturing facilities in India. And we do manufacture specialty polymers, specialty pigments, and agrochemical. This discussion uh, is about the high temperature thermoplastics used in composites. We have always known that thermoset plastics like epoxy resins, polyester resins are the ones which are used for composite applications, but a thermoplastic composites are very new. Some companies do manufacture this in the world and uh, we do want to bring this information to the listeners of this talk by which they will certainly benefit that how a thermoplastic composite can be made using the polymer ranges manufactured by Garda Chemicals. The next slide is on the brief overview about the presentation. It is covered into four segments, introduction on the thermoplastic composites, then the next one would be thermoplastic composite process technology, Garda's high performance polymers that we manufacture and their applications. This slide talks on reinforced thermoplastic composites, different performance or polymer options and especially how the thermoplastics behave differently from the thermosets in the composite application. For example, the thermoplastics have unlimited self life unlike the thermosets, where have very high heat resistance. If you in case of an epoxy or polyester resins, the maximum temperature of use is up to 165, 170 degree centigrade. What happens thereafter? The solutions come from the thermoplastic composites, which I will be discussing a little further. High stiffness and toughness, again a USP. High strength to weight ratio, making them suitable for metal replacements, we will discuss. Flame resistance, low smoke density, low toxicity no sticky behavior unlike the epoxy and polyester resins. So, making them user and environment friendly to work through. Very easy welding process because they are thermoplastics can be butt welded, ultrasonically welded, heat welded. No delaminations because they flow thermoplastics. Low water uptake, melt formable can be thermoformed, compression molded and the beauty is design flexibility because they are thermoplastic again. And if you see the pyramid, we are I am only covering the performance polymers, which includes from the top PBI polybenzimidazole, PKK polyether ketone ketone, PEK and PEK polyether ketone and polyether ether ketone, polysulfone, PPS polyphenylen sulfide, and the bottom one is nylon and polycarbonates. As the performance goes up, the price also increases. And basically the performance means is the heat resistance that we are talking about. Again the continuing slide thermoplastic polymers for composites. In this slide you can see that there are a couple of polymers which I have compared against each other in terms of their heat resistant properties. The red ones are polyketones and PBI and you can see that the application temperature for PBI service temperature we call it is 350 degree centigrade for polyether ketone ketone is 300 for polyether ketone is 280 polyether cell phone is 180 and followed by PPS again 180 nylon 1200 and nylon 6 120. So, basically the red ones are the polymers which I am going to talk to in detail and that is the area that we focus in developing thermoplastic composites. Various fibers has been used to manufacture composite because a composite with a fiber is meaningless and these fibers can be carbon fiber, glass fiber, aramid fiber and polyether ketone fiber, PEK fiber as well. This slide details the thermoplastics versus thermoset composites and metals as well. As you can see in the table uh, which is shown here, the performance of PEK 30 percent carbon fiber reinforced PEK polyether ketone, the, the strength 
and specific strength modulus and specific modulus are the highest among the group. In fact, the specific strength of P k 30 percent carbon fiber reinforce is 293 mega Pascals which is more than cast iron steel and even aluminum. So, this makes the product absolutely suitable for metal replacement applications because they are even better than metal in their strength to weight ratio. So, the, the, the bottom of the slide says uh, that specific strength is strength to weight ratio and specific strength of 30 percent carbon fiber reinforced peak is much higher than aluminum and steel which is a great finding. This slide speaks on the different type of composites that are manufactured today in the world short fiber reinforced, long fiber reinforced and continuous fiber composites. The short fiber reinforced composites are the very common composites that we manufacture today in by extrusion compounding. The input fiber length is around 2 to 4 millimeters which when passed through a twin screw compounder for compounding by melt extrusion process is chopped down to as small as 0 0.4 mm. So, the performance of short fiber is lower than the long fiber versus the continuous fiber. In case of a long fiber composites, the input fiber length can be 1 inch is quite long and after it passes through the pultrusion equipment and chopped off, the resulting fiber length can be 4 to 6 mm is almost similar to the input fiber length of the short fiber composites. In case of a continuous fiber composites, of course, there is no limitation to length, hence the performance is the best. The next one compares the com performance of various type of uh, reinforcements composites uh, and uh, for example, the short fiber, the long fiber, the continuous fiber and also the continuous fiber thermosets. The clear outcome of this presentation or clear understanding from this presentation is the CFRT which is continuous fiber reinforced thermoplastics has highest mechanical performance compared to LFT long fiber thermoplastics and short fiber thermoplastic composites. Compared to thermosets composites the CFRT provides even higher impact strength. So, basically the topic of the day or the innovation of the day or what the world is moving towards is continuous fiber reinforced thermoplastic composites CFRTs. With that background on the composite technology introduction to composites, I am going to make you all work through the polymers that are manufactured by Garda chemicals in India and which are just not polymers, but they are all ultra performance specialty polymers. We manufacture today three polymers PEK polyether ketone, PKK polyether ketone ketone and PBI polybenz imidazoles. So, these three polymers are all high performance in nature and we manufactured all of these polymers in our India facilities uh, with a keeping the cost in a way that it can be used by someone to replace metals easily. Giving a brief background of our company, we are not new to this advanced polymer manufacturing. We have been manufacturing advanced polymers since old 1998 days. As you can see in the slide, in the year 1998, we first commercialized PES polythosulfone, then in 2000 PSU polysulfone, 2001 is PEEK polyether ether ketone, 2002 is PSU, I am sorry PPSU polyphenylene sulfone, 2003 is a reactive version of PES which is typically used for surface coating applications. 2004 was a great year for us because we manufacture some of these super cell phones poly super cell phone B and poly super cell phone T. The poly super cell phone T had a TZ glass transition temperature of 265 to 270 degree centigrade. Now, back again uh, we are manufacturing in from 2011 PEK, 2012 PBI and 2013 which is of course, the technology is developed, but PEKK will be really commercially launched it is being made right now in the pilot level. <coughs> However, a little uh, 
a bottom line which is mentioned in the slide that all the top six polymers <coughs> have been sold to Solvay in the year 2006. That is why they, these polymers, the top six do not reflect in our basket of products today. We are manufacturing only the polymers which are marked here in red, which are even more advanced compared to the top six polymers. If you see this number of hours that we have owned, there is an endless list, but I have just given a brief overview of some of the important awards. Sir PCRA award we have won in couple of years, Plast Icon award which is an extremely prestigious award uh, given by Plast India Foundation. We have again won it uh, four times, then FIKI award we have won a couple of times. So, awards are nothing new to us. This, this slide I will be speaking on thermoplastic pyramids which is what we all know. It is on different polymers uh, that is available in the world and where do they group in, in a pyramid. And uh, we are Garda chemicals, the three polymers that we manufacture today are actually they form the top of the pyramids, ABPBI which is PBI, polybenzimidazole, PEKK and PEK. So, we are in the top and the polymers that we manufacture little bit on the structure property relationships and as you can see that uh, the, the glass transition of PEK is higher than PEK, for PEKK it is higher than PEK and PEK and PBI is the highest around 450 degrees the glass transitions. Now these are all semi crystalline polymers, PBI also has is a semi crystalline polymer, but we have not noticed uh, in our typical conventional methods a single melting point, but it shows a very strong crystalline peak in XRDs. The polymers uh, that we manufacture do have some brand names and our PEK has been uh, branded as GPEG. Our PEK surface coating, you do make a surface coating of PEK, it is called as G coat. PEKK is branded as GAPEK and PBI is branded as Gazole. So, these are all registered trademarked brand names which will be selling in the market. We are selling and will be selling in the market. What are the advantages of the PEK polymers specifically very high heat resistant, retention of mechanical properties at elevated temperatures, excellent chemical resistance, outstanding resistance to hydrolysis, radiation resistant properties, one of the best in terms of radiation resistance and uh, very competitive pricing. Various grades we make as you can see this powders, granules and we also make some thermal conductive grades and carbon nanotube filled grades and the below two are surface coating G code 500 and G code 600. 500 is liquid dispersion surface coating of PEK and 600 is powder electrostatic powder surface coating of PEK. The next few slides will be actually showing where does the PEK stands in terms of PEK and PEKK in terms of their performance property compared to other polymers. As you can see that PEK and PEKK that we manufacture actually form the top segment has the highest tensile strength among all other performance polymers. The polymers that we have listed PA46, polyamide 46, PPA, polythalamides and linear PPS are all performance polymers. There is no commodity polymers here, but within the group these two polymers PEK and PEKK stand out with the highest properties at room temperatures. Same here at 200 degree centigrade the tensile strength of PEK is the highest among the group and PEKK is follows. So, basically the strength properties are retained at high temperatures. The other beauty of these polymers is the low temperature properties because in many cold countries the fluctuations from low to higher is required. So, the properties sometimes in an application the temperatures can go down to minus 50, minus 60. In these applications again the PEK and PEKK even PEEK they excel with up to minus 100 degree centigrade temperature resistant properties on the bottom side of it. This means that they retain their mechanical properties at these temperatures. We have also measured the mechanical strength of our PK and their carbon and glass fiber composites at various temperatures and as you can see here 
in this place at 250 degree centigrade the virgin material which is the blue color retains same strength which is around 50 mega Pascals a little more less than that which is good as good as the room temperature strength of polycarbonate or some other engineering poly nylons and the carbon fiber and glass even higher strength. So, this means they are real high temperature plastics. This is a storage modulus versus temperature curve and it is a designers curve we call it also a designers curve because any design engineer would need this curve if he is thinking of metal replacement applications. As here we see the storage modulus versus temperature and this storage modulus is dropping at say around 150 degree centigrade and then it falls down, but still it retains good amount of modulus at around 250 to 760 degree centigrade. That is the reason why these polymers can be used even up to 280 degree centigrade in an applications. If you reinforce them with glass and carbon, these storage modulus values go much much higher and that is why again for stru real structural engineering applications we would recommend glass and carbon fiber reinforce thermoplastic PEK composites for load bearing applications. Okay. This slide speaks of PEK composite preparation. So, how are these composites manufactured? These composites are manufactured by two methods extrusion compounding followed by injection molding and compression molding. This means that the polymers along with the reinforcement glass and carbon fibers or other fillers and additives are mixed together and fed it to a twin screw extruder. It is compounded into granules pellets. These pellets are further injection molded to form the end part product for a particular engineering application. These pellets can also be compression molded to form a say or the polymer itself can be compression molded in its virgin form into the same. So, compression molding and injection molding are one process. The other one is surface coating followed by compression molding and thermoforming. On the surface coating front, I will be discussing details little ahead in my presentation. This slide speaks of mechanical properties of GPEG composites. As you can see that the we have covered here three different uh, categories the unfilled PEK 1200G, 30 percent glass fiber reinforced PEK and 30 percent carbon fiber reinforced PEK composites. The carbon fiber reinforced composites no doubt have the highest strength and modulus and structural application again we recommend this one. We have also done some studies on various percentages of glass filling and seen how the properties improve with the addition of glass fibers. 30 percent glass fiber has a higher mechanical performance compared to 20 which is higher than 10 percent which is higher than virgin materials. The ductility or the elongation do drop with increase in fiber percentages. This one speaks of the similar composites, but using a 1400 grade which is our highest flow PK resin. The difference between the previous slide and this slide is in this case we do have a composite with 60 percent grass fiber reinforced which is a fantastic material and which is our patentable product. You can see in the 60 percent glass filled grade the one here the modulus is 28000 mega Pascals and the flexural modulus is 26000 mega Pascals which is way above the 30 percent glass filled material which we manufacture using a 1200 grade. So, basically for very high strength engineering applications where uh, you know a glass fiber field makes economical sense because carbon fiber reinforced grades are expensive we recommend 60 percent filled materials which is a little lower in price as well. Now, this again is a bar chart for different glass fiber reinforcement. Here again the 60 percent glass fiber reinforced material has very high flexural modulus compared to the 30 percent uh, glass fibers, 20 percent and 10 percent glass fibers. This slide we have compared uh, a peak 
पीई के पॉलीमर पॉलीथर किटोन पॉलीमर शॉर्ट फाइबर वर्सेस लॉन्ग फाइबर कंपोजिट्स इन माय प्रीवियस कपल ऑफ वन ऑफ द स्लाइड्स आई हैव डिटेल दैट व्हाट इज अ शॉर्ट फाइबर कंपोजिट व्हाट्स अ लॉन्ग फाइबर कंपोजिट जस्ट टू रिकैपिचुलेट शॉर्ट फाइबर कंपोजिट्स आर मैन्युफैक्चर्ड बाय ट्विन स्क्रू एक्सट्रूजन कंपाउंडिंग यूजिंग ए फाइबर ऑफ फोर टू फाइव एम एम इन लेंथ एंड आफ्टर कंपाउंडिंग द फाइबर लेंथ विच रिटेन्स इन द कॉम्पोजिट इज अराउंड जीरो पॉइंट फोर मिलोमीटर्स इन ए लॉन्ग फाइबर कंपोजिट इज मैनुफैक्चर्ड बाई मोस्टली पुलट्रूजन मैथड्स एंड देन चॉप्ट ऑफ हियर द फाइबर्स कैन बी अराउंड वन फिट ऑफ लेंथ विच इज फर्दर चॉप्ट इन द प्रोसेस टू मैनुफैक्चर कंपोजिट्स हैविंग एट लीस्ट सिक्स एम एम लेंथ इन द एंड प्रोडक्ट सो दिस मीन्स सिक्स एम एम टू मे बी वन इंच लेंथ ऑफ द एंड प्रोडक्ट दिस मेन मेक्स इट वन ऑफ द highest reasons why the long fiber reinforced thermoplastics give better performance compared to short fiber reinforced thermoplastics and one major difference is the i jod impact strength it is almost two times is that of the short fiber reinforced thermoplastics so i jod impact strength of long fiber reinforced thermoplastics is twice twice as that of uh, short fiber reinforced thermoplastics and uh, that makes this product a unique material polyether coatings for continuous fiber composites this is something which i have briefly told in my uh, previous slides that the method of manufacturing pek composites also involves surface coating methods so here i'll say how it is what are the advantages of surface coating it gives you excellent chemical resistance heat resistance higher surface hardness abrasion resistance low moisture of absorption hydrolysis resistance everything good property of pk is obtained also using surface coatings we have three grades g coat 500 which is a liquid dispersion g coat 501 is a liquid dispersion with ptfe added and g coat 600 which is a fine powder which is used for electrostatic powder coatings now this is the brief process here you can see that the fiber uh, racks Uh, creel or racks here the glass or carbon fiber is brought in to a chamber which can be either fluidized bed for powder coating or a liquid emulsion chamber just to impregnate the fibers the next step is the fibers after being coated either by the liquid dispersion or by a fluidized bed the by powder coating methods this fi the impregnated fibers get into side a heating oven where the water or any solvents flash off and the pk polymer melts and fuses into the fibers matrix forming a extremely well fused uh, or you know covered fibers with the polymer matrix coming out these two these fibers continuous fiber these are all continuous fibers these continuous fibers are further pressed in two pressing rollers which are heated rollers to form a tape this step is then taken to a take off system this is a concept the machines can be any type this is a concept how it is made and this is the ladies and gentlemen this is the way how majority of the thermoplastic composites using high performance polymers are going to be designed developed or is are being done designed and developed today in the world and this is the next generation materials <coughs> after those as i showed you after these uh, the fibers are taken off in roller systems the next step is thermoforming these fibers are cut into small lengths or desired lengths and then are thermoformed into a desired shape at the thermoforming temperature of the polymer for pk it's around 400 degrees centigrade the resultant product is a thermoplastic composites which has a higher heat resistant compared to epoxy or polyester composites Ladies and gentlemen, this polymer is called polyether ketone ketone. Again, one of the fantastic polymers that Garda Chemical manufactures. And this is, we are manufacturing using a very novel process. Only two monomers use giving very high temperature resistance. The melting point is around three ninety degrees centigrade. The TZ is around one seventy degrees centigrade. very high continuous use temperatures up to 300 degrees centigrade 
and one of the USPs, this also belong to polyketone family like PIK, PWK, PEK and PEKK, all three belong to polyketone family. But within the polyketone family, the highest compressive strength is given by PEKK. As I have detailed here, highest compressive strength in polyketone family making it suitable for oil and gas sector application is by PEKK and this makes it suitable for mostly downhole application where certain parts or equipments are taken below the earth to drill oil or water. Low creep and high mechanical strength elevated temperatures, accident oil and chemical resistant and also we are now investigating the possibilities of carbon and glass fiber reinforcement because this is a new polymer. Yeah, the next slide which I am uh, speaking about or the next polymer is polybenzimidazole, new plastics for higher performance and more advanced application. Polybenzimidazole has been there in the industry, but only a few companies or maybe one or two companies in the world manufacture it. And this is indeed the highest temperature resistant plastics of the world, not necessarily thermoplastic. The PBI, we call it the short form is PBI, polybenzimidazole. And uh, what are the USP of this material? Why is it so important? This is a, a imidazole link as you can see in the slide. And the USP is it has a high TG of 450 degree centigrade. No other polymer system says a TG like PBI 450 degree centigrade. This is indeed very, very high TG. And the other beauty of this product is very high service temperatures up to 350 degree centigrade and that too under load. So, again a big USP. Short term temperatures can be as high as 400. 25 degree centigrade, non flammable, absolutely non flammable, low creep, high surface hardness, close to metals and excellent wear and abrasion properties, extraordinary compressive strength of 400 mega Pascals. The polyketones in comparison, the PKK which is known to have the highest compressive strength in polyketone family has a compressive strength of 130 mega Pascals. In comparison, PBI has a compressive strength of 400 mega Pascals. This compressive strength is directly related to pressure resistant applications, making this polymer absolutely the, the choice for under the earth application where the pressures are very high. Now, this is a typical again the storage modulus versus temperature curve, the, which is again the designer curve, curve always I speak of it, this curves as the designer curve. And here you can see that uh, up to say 400 degrees centigrade, the modulus drops very little. It is it still retains around 800 mega Pascals. 800 mega Pascal is not a small number. It's a good amount of number for engineering design application. So a, a designer can design a plastic component up to 400 degrees centigrade using this material because it has a load bearing capabilities up to 400 degrees centigrade. This also shows a TZ of 458 degree centigrade. So, it varies from 450 to 458, 59 degree centigrade. So, the high TZ material, high modulus material, a designer choice for metal replacement. We would also make a blend of PEK and PVI, which is the series is gasol 6200. The previous one is gasol 5200. This is 6200. Now, this being a blend of PK and PBI, this has a thermoplastic nature, it is processable. The other one, the 5000 series is not melt processable, that is only sintered. It can be formed by high pressure, high temperature sintering into a set. Whereas, 6000 series is a thermoplastic material like any other thermoplastic high performance materials can be injection molded, extruded and compounded. This again has a good amount of modulus up to say 300 degree centigrade, it retains around 270 degree mega Pascals, making it suitable up to 300 degrees as a material of choice. This slide compares the gasol 6200 with uh, PEK polyether ketone hours and the cellazole TU60 is a similar pick PBI blend from PBI performance materials US. The brand is cellazole, our brand is gasol. We infer two, three thing, two things here. One is 
the p k has a modulus up to uh, say two say 70 degrees it has retains some amount of modulus the gasol g p e g 1200 g has a modulus of around say 200 mega pascal 250 rather up to 280 degrees centigrade whereas the gasol which is a p e k p b i alloy has twice the modulus at 280 degree centigrade say 300 degree centigrade it has a modulus close to around 600 to 700 mega pascals this means that this material up to 300 degree centigrade a PEC PBI blend of 6000 series is a material of choice compared to PEK alone again these curves are designer curves where they depend on this information for designing an application so, what are these PEC PBI alloys? What are the USPs of these materials? They are melt processable as I told you. They have high temperature resistance under mechanical performance and loading up to 300 degree centigrade. And one of the beauty of this product is very low coefficient of thermal expansion similar to metals, some of the metals making them ideal material for metal replacement application where very very tight tolerances are required example the piston rings. They do have very low shrinkage as well or the differential shrinkages between along and across the flow is also very low for these materials. The coefficient of friction is again low for these PEC PV alloys compared to PEK alone and wear resistance is very very good. So, these are the advantages of these materials applications can be in petrochemicals and industrial different things and even gas handling glass bottle making or glass handling equipments. The application of 5000 series is in semicon some of the applications petrochemical industrial aerospace ion exchange membranes and fibers these below two applications the, the last one specifically fibers for fire protection fabrics this is a composite application for PBI. PBI fibers can be wet spinned and can be used for varieties of applications and uh, will be possibly reverting back after few months with a detailed discussion of PBI in one of these webinars again. And what all grades we have with PBI? We have the 5000 series which is the centered product of PBI, pure PBI. Uh, we have low viscosity and high viscosity grades. Again we have 6000 series which you have the unfilled grades uh, in powder form and granule form and we also have the 30 percent glass fiber, carbon fiber and lubricated grades for these materials. This table compares the mechanical properties and physical and mechanical properties of unfilled PEC PBI alloy along with the 30 percent glass fiber, 30 percent carbon fiber and the lubricated grids and you can go through these tables uh, in the presentation which will be uh, which is available to you and the, 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 the extremely important point which I would like to mention here is again the high flexural modulus and high tensile modulus of this 30 percent carbon fiber reinforced grids and uh, which makes them a strong material for many applications. This is a very important slide because it speaks of the tribological performance of PBI alloys which is PEC PBI alloys versus PEK alone. Now as we can see here this slide has few datas load that is used to measure the wear specific wear rate coefficient of friction and PV. The load is the input and these are the outputs. What we can see here that up to 150 Newton of load. Uh, I mean the I will put it otherwise that P k as a polymer can withstand only up to 150 Newton of load and beyond that it is gone I mean it wear performance is over. So, the material is finished in terms of uh, you know either breaking or melting off or chipping off some the material is gone. So, the maximum wear performance of P k under load this is again virgin P k is up to 150 Newton of load and the limiting PV is only 4.66 mega Pascals. 
this is a very limiting PV for any thermoplastic composite is very important because that decides how strong is your product for wear resistant applications. Whereas with a PBI alloy, this is a PEC PBI alloy, it has gone up to 700 Newtons of load, for almost 5 times that of PEC. And that is the beauty of this PBI alloy. The wear performance of PBI alloy is much, much superior to PEK. May, it may be wear, it may be specific wear rate, it may be coefficient of friction, which is again low, or the PV limits, which is PV limit for PBI alloy is 21.7 megapascals, which is much, much above the PEK. So, it is a strong product which resistance very high wear and uh, under loading. This slide speaks of the thermal expansion of PBI alloys and the, its composites versus PEK alone. And uh, as you can see here, the thermal expansion of PBI unfilled alloy 6200Z is similar to PEK at room temperature, but at 300 degrees, it is almost half of that of PEK. So, this means that the expansion contraction of PBI alloys is much lesser for much lesser compared to PEK making them a suitable material for many designing application which possibly involves some moving parts or tight contact tolerance parts. Now this slide again details the shrinkage mold shrinkage of PEK versus the PBI alloys again the unfilled PEK unfilled PBI alloy. 30 percent glass filled PEK, 30 percent glass filled P PVI alloy, 30 percent carbon fiber reinforced PEK, 30 percent carbon fiber reinforced PVI alloy and uh, lubricated grids. In all of these forms, one common thing, we, two things we find, the shrinkage itself for the PVI alloy is lesser compared to PEK, the mold shrinkage. But the most important thing is the differential shrinkage, that is the difference between along the across the flow is much lower for the PBI alloys versus a equivalent PK alloy, PK grade. Example, we can take the glass filled grade, it is a 0 0.3 percent along the flow and 1 percent across the flow. The similar glass filled grade is 0 0.2 percent along the flow and only 0.58 percent across the flow. So, the difference is lesser. This means the warpage, the warpage is nothing but the differential shrinkage is much lesser for the PBI alloys. This again makes this product PBI alloys a material of choice, material of choice for composites in high end metal replacement application by the design engineers. Okay, so, I have covered a lot of my presentation on the, the previous parts on the introduction to composites, the little uh, overview on the, uh, the technicalities the polymers manufactured by Garda chemicals, PEC, PEK and PBI. The next slide will be speaking on the application of uh, high temperature polymers that is manufactured by Garda chemicals and an overview of what all areas that we can cover is in the next slide. Offshore, industrial, aerospace and defense, infrastructure and construction, medical, consumer, recreational transportation, energy production and storage. So, all these areas are the segments where we are looking for application or we are developing applications or we have commercialized applications. So, next slides will be showing some application photographs uh, where they are used and little about the product. PEK and PKK application and uh, these polymers are most suited for offshore application because of their low water absorption properties, extremely good oil and chemical resistance, high temperature resistance and high strength at elevated temperatures. So, the applications are refining, cracking, oil drilling, submersible pumps which is like dewatering, mining, high depth pumps and certain automotive applications. Some of the offshore applications are listed as valve flares, valve rings, seals from 30 percent carbon fiber and 30 percent glass fiber reinforced PEK and PKK grids and PKK of course, supersede PEK due to its higher TZ and temperature resistance. High strength and temperature resistance are the USP of all these polymers in these applications. 
The next one is piston rings and bushings. Piston rings are one of the biggest growing segments for high-end materials applications because for different end use the requirements vary and there are areas where the high temperature resistant under very high loading is critical with very good dimensional stabilities. So, some of the applications are PK and PKK in piston rings. Again the thrust pads and thrust bearings for downhole applications to elevate water and oil under the earth. Certain industrial applications like boosings, bearing cages are again uh, these are all frictionware materials. We develop frictionware composites of PEK, PEKK using glass carbon fiber, graphite and PDFE MOS2 mix. So, they have a unique combination of strength, wear resistance and coefficient of friction. So, that is the reason why they find a lot of application in uh, seals, bushings in uh, industrial segment. Certain compression molded parts photographs of PEK. This also PEK can be made into monofilaments and in beginning of my slide I have said that one of the fibers is PEK fibers. This is the actual picture of PEK fibers. This is a monofilament we do uh, this can also be made into multifilaments and this mono and multifilaments can be cross woven with glass fiber matrix or carbon fiber matrix to form the composite. When heat pressed the PEK melts and forms the composite over the carbon or glass fiber matrix. So, that is the reason why these filaments are used. The semiconductor also has a good amount of application of polycyclotones and certain aerospace aviation segment applications for PK surface coatings and carbon fiber composites. One of the very noble application which we target to develop in future is mold insulation sheets, rubber and thermoset mold insulation sheets and these sheets are continuous fiber composites of PEK which is made by the coating grids impregnating the carbon fiber into the coating and thermoforming to make the sheets which are used as insulation beyond 165 degrees mold temperatures or surface temperatures where the epoxy or polyester resin sheets fail due to temperature resistance. Again this is a very innovative application for PVI which is the next for the bottle making plants. When the bottling plants when the bottle is blown for carrying those heated almost the bo bottle is in plasma state it is red hot to one station to the other station the neck is used that the neck typically cannot be of metal because it will break the bottle it is glass. So, the material of choice has to be very high temperature resistance and also provide low coefficient of friction and uh, that is with this material PVI polybenzamidazole. This is find some application in these segments. The semiconductor parts is called as the wafer carriers. Here the warpage at shrinkage has to be top notch it means it should be extremely low warpage and shrinkage that is not possible only with polyketones because they have some amount of warpage and shrinkage differential shrinkage and that leads to warpage. With PEK PBI alloys that problem is resolved they have very low differential shrinkage and low warpage one of the reasons they are ideal material for such high end application in semiconductor where high temperature requirement is again very important. The fibers of PEK if PBI I am sorry the fibers of PBI are the very new developments and we intend to manufacture these fibers in coming months and we will be venturing out in developing applications as replacement of material for asbestos because asbestos is carcinogenic and PBI fibers offers excellent friction wear properties better than asbestos and very high level of reinforcement we use a polymeric fiber and again fabrics for protective clothing we would be developing this once our fiber plant starts off in next few months time. With that brings me to an end of this uh, session on high performance or high temperature thermoplastics for composite applications 
and I have driven you through my presentation giving you an overview on the composites, uh, introduction to the composites, the type of composites and the type of advanced materials that Garda manufacturers used in these composites, their unique selling propositions or typical key important properties and the related application to these high end materials. So, that brings an end to this discussion and the final slide before I close is what are the future of thermoplastic composites in the world. Thermoplastic composites can be used in more structural application using different technical thermoplastic in combination with glass, carbon and synthetic fibers PBI or PEK synthetic fibers. These can replace metal application and reduce weight because as we discussed in the beginning of our slide the strength to weight ratio for a plastic composite is much much higher than steel or aluminum. Improved processing methods will be developed and applied as well. So, this means that a thermoplastic composite does not have the limitation of a thermoset in terms of processing. With that the discussion comes to an end and details you can find out from gardaplastics.com. Uh, at the end of my presentation, uh, let me thank Indian Plastic Institute for giving uh, our company a platform to put up this valued presentation and uh, I am sure uh, the, the listeners or the viewers to this presentation would be greatly benefited because of the content of the lecture and typically suited for engineering application of thermoplastic composites. And uh, we would certainly like to part, uh, put off a advanced version of this presentation through IPI in the coming months whenever it is organized on even more details of uh, high end thermoplastics for composite applications. Thank you organizers. Thank you IPI and uh, we will be interacting again. Thank you.